Hello everybody, Captain Geo here. I uh, recently found that our uh, wood deck is uh, got a few rotten boards and uh, it's been there for some time but uh, all in all the deck's got good integrity but uh, we had a couple of uh, foot go through. <laughs> so I thought I'd make a little uh, video on my repair thereof on the deck so uh the following video is how i repaired the deck uh the deck still has quite a lot of life to it and of course redecking is very expensive with today's 2022 prices so uh take a look at the video and see what you think bye bye hello everybody it's captain geo this is a bracing block to support a new deck board with. Now I had good luck because the deck boards are approximately five and a half inches wide. Going with a nine and a half inch brace block mounted horizontally to the existing joist. You can see two examples right there. Coming in exactly three inches from either side and an inch and a half down from the top, I pre-bored three holes, one in the middle slightly lower. Those pre-drilled holes go through with three inch screws, ready to screw into the joist to piggyback. I wanted to get this part out of the way. This is the new part that the new cut-in piece rests on. As far as taking out the deck, you start by using a putty knife. And you insert the putty knife right in the joint till you hit the stud, mark it with a pencil. And then use the Svensson speed square. You lay it across right next to the joist where your pencil mark is. You pencil mark it and then you cut it with a sawzall. I used a sawzall with a plunge cut. In other words, I put it in and I cut a circle with plenty of room to spare. Then I back cut this side straight. And I turn it around and finish cut it along the joist that way. Now obviously you don't want to cut two in the same spot. You don't want to have a continuous joint. You can see how on this one, the rotted part stopped there from the door. So I went one more on the other one. I've already installed the piggyback joist hangers we previously discussed. These are mounted exactly flush with the top of the existing joists. Now as we clean all this out and we cut with the sawzall, you merely smash and bust apart the rotted pieces you're taking out. More than likely there'll be nails sticking out. So I used my Milwaukee metal grinding blade on the grinder and I ground all the Existing nails right off, pounded them flush with a hammer, cleaned up with shop vac, scraped all the debris, and now I'm ready to install the new deck boards, which I gave measurements to Stacy. She wrote them down, and they're pre-cut, ready to install. In this case, I have four boards going in, and you can see the width of them right here. One short one, one long one, one medium, and another short one. I'm about to lay those down, and I'm using the T25s. I'm going to use the two inch T25s, not the inch and a half. I need a little more bite to get down into the joists. And I am going to be sure, it's imperative, we perpendicularly pre drill these at three quarter inch in from the end. To get yourself in the middle of your new joist hangers those are these are inch and a half so you want to come in approximately three quarters pre-drill exactly neatly I'm going to come in an inch and a quarter from each end drill through insert screws and then screw the board in obviously locating the joist in the middle of the board same process I will scribe with a pencil I will mark inch and a quarter in from each side and then of course fasten the new deck board. 
I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I've laid my two short pieces in, pre-cut. They fit pretty nice. I actually had to rip my boards from the store-bought five and three, five and a half. They were actually almost five and five eighths. I ripped a quarter inch off to make them the existing five and three eighths, so we get a breather gap there. Now I'm going to mark the center here, come in inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, likewise on the two ends, pre-drill and fasten. Move on to the next. I'll come back when we're caught up. Okay, as you can see, I have pre-drilled by each choice and I have now installed or will install on these new Milwaukee's you can just pop in that's the T25 now I am using the upgraded GRK precision fit star T25 star drive nine gauge by two inch and this is more of an upgraded uh, screw above and beyond your typical t25 yellow box grip right these are about oh five dollars cheaper a box than the grks but the grks are a much finer grade of steel so that's what we're going to do and now that we've got them pre-drilled, we can merely push in. In these short cases, there's three joists. So that is six screws, as you can see. And once they are in, our pre-drilled holes, We'll very carefully align the boards, maintaining the proper gap. I actually, again, like I said, rip these boards a little to give a nice reveal and gap. And uh, we're ready to go. I'll check back once I get a few of these screwed in. Thanks. Now I thought this actually an important part to bring up, which I neglected, the gaps. I always didn't like big gaps, but it turns out with wood decks, the bigger the gap, the better. I had to come back on this deck and run the sawzall down these to open up a gap. They were pushed tight and it created rot much quicker. So as you go across the deck, I actually ran the blade the entire length of the deck to 20 feet opening up these gaps that's why these boards are five and three eighths instead of five and a half uh, now in this case you can see I'm fitting one in I've pre-drilled I've loaded the screws I'm good there I got a gap there and it's time to set the first screw now when driving these T25s it's quite a feeling of accomplishment. But what you want to do is break the surface. You want to, what's called, drive them home just a bit. I would say about a sixteenth. We don't want to go too deep. No, see, no sense for that. But at the same time, we don't want to be stubbing a toe on it. And this is Monty's runway out the door here. This is all right outside the door. So... We actually have another big hole in the deck over there, but that's another day. So right now I'm going to continue to fasten this down and move on to these two long ones. I'll check back with you in a bit. Okay, we're about halfway installed with the new boards. You can see the two short ones, and I went for the longest, and I'll save the uh, last one for after I get this longest done I'm going to center it in the gap right now it's loose and it's not centered but it will be 
I have to pre-drill first. And then I'll install that last 58 incher. Once the uh, boards are all complete, will be uh, the integrity will be solid as a rock. Okay, we're down to the last board. This pre-cut 58 inch. Now, before I close up, I want to remind you that the nine and a half inch braces, which are screwed horizontally into the existing joists, are nothing more than support for the end of the boards. Remember, you want to put your screws in here, not here on the running boards. On the end seams, yes, you want to use the brace. You already have existing ones here and here on the board that you cut. So there will be four screws right there, two in the old joist and two new ones in the brace. But for running seams, you want to make sure, like in this case right here, you pre-drill into the old joist, not the new one. Obviously the brace doesn't go all the way across for this last board. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, close it up, and see what we wind up with. And here we go. All complete Amundo. Little deck rebuild right there. And we're all good. Give it a little rinse down. I'll come back and wash the footprints off, but still. There you go. By the way, the reason that rotted there is because Stacy and I kept a rubber mat on top there for the dogs to go in and out. It never got a chance to breathe. It stayed moist and it accelerated the rotting process. The rest of the deck has pretty good integrity. We have one bad spot along this rail. There's a hole in it and that's because the water was actually puddling against the design of this rail which having a kicker along the bottom is incorrect. We need something with a two, three inch gap for the water to drain out. I'll correct that in the next video.